Hello and welcome to another C3 Stingray video. Uh, hey, I'm semi-retired so now I have more time to do these videos and hopefully I'm going to put a lot more up. I still don't, still don't feel like I have any time, but anyway, you can see the, C, um, the 75 wide body still sitting here and I have an 05 Jaguar over there that's in pieces that I hope is going to run one day. But today we're talking about the 2000 Corvette and I sold my Camaro, so this car has become my daily driver, and I was going into town, everything was working fine. On the way back, suddenly, I had no signal lights, and when I got home, I found out I had no brake lights, and basically, I had zero lights in the back altogether, so I had to figure out this problem, so that's what this video concerns, and we're going to go over fuses, we're going to go over grounds, we're going to go over the replacing that hazard switch, actually taking the hazard switch out, testing it, to see if that's your problem, and putting it back in. And we're also going to take a look at the brake light switch. So, this video covers quite a bit actually. So, if you're having any problems with your rear lights, this is a pretty good video to watch. So, let's check it out. So, to start out, we're going to get the multimeter out and we're going to check the ohms on the fuses. Um, this is my new multimeter. This one's pretty nice. It can actually make a sound when things are good. But otherwise, you just want to check your fuse to make sure it zeroes out and you have a good fuse but I'm gonna do it in the actual fuse box itself because I don't have to remove each fuse separately and do it so this will be a lot quicker so we just go on your passenger side and pull out pull out your floor mat and then remove that panel to get to the fuse box itself you'll have to remove that fuse box cover and we can check three fuses Now the fuses we're going to check are the number 6, parking lamps and tail lamps. The number 8, the stop hazard flashers. And the number 15, the hazard turn signal. Now checking them in the car, this is a lot easier. All you have to do is touch each side of the fuse. And I'll show you a close-up of this. It's kind of hard to see. You can see you're just touching each side of the fuse and making sure that the fuse is good. You know, with mine, it's making a signal. With yours, if you don't have that, you just want to make sure it zeroes out. Now all the fuses are good, so the next thing is you're going to check the ground wires in the back. Now, you need to take off this uh, reverse light panel, and there's four T15 torque screws in that, and you'll have to pull that out and remove the reverse lights. You just gotta squeeze and twist them. So you can get access to this, the grounding wires in the back, which control the rear lights. Now if you reach up behind here, and you'll find it, it might be either taped or kind of fastened somehow, and you can pull it out, and you're going to have to remove this splice pack that's in the end. It's basically just grounding out the wires. As you can see, there's a, a tab on each corner, and you just pry those out, and then you can work that cover out of there. Sometimes you have to use a screwdriver and get behind there and just kind of twist it. If it's really corroded, they're hard to get out. But this one was isn't that bad, and it, it came out pretty easy. But I took and cleaned it all up, got it nice and clean, and cleaned out the plug, and... I'm going to put that back in. Just want to make sure the ground's good there. The the front grounds on the car, the ones that are on the frame in the front are the ones that really get bad because they get a lot of moisture and they'll corrode. So you fuse those, those grounds are a, a big problem with these cars. So we're putting this back and then we're going to go cycle the hazard switch. Sometimes if you just push this hazard switch in and out, in and out, in and out, Sometimes the lights will come back on. It doesn't always work, but it's worth a shot. Probably should have did that before we did the other things, but now we're to the point where we're going to have to take that hazard switch out. So you want to pop that or the catch release and fog light switch there. You pop that out, take that out, and there's a T15 screw in there. Now on the other side, there's that little vent with that sensor in there. You want to take out another T15 screw. And there's just two more screws underneath. 
And these are both 7 millimeter screws, at least on mine they are. I know some people have torque screws in theirs, but this one has 7 millimeters. And once you get those screws out, you kind of have to grab and pull. I mean, it's kind of stuck in there, so you have to give it a little, a little force to try to get it out of there. Now this next shot isn't really good, but uh, the round where the ignition switch is, this panel is up behind the other panel, so you have to like pull the front panel out and work this out from behind it. And then, as you can see, it's like stuck here too. I had to pull it out there, but we still have that sensor plug. You got to unplug that, and then this whole panel will come out. Then, now that we have that out, we're going to try to take this hazard switch out. First, we got to take that cover off which I just have a little hook there that I'm like getting behind it and just kind of easily massaging it out of there and it, it'll pop you don't want to be too forceful with it but it, it'll come out fairly easy and now we gotta get this hazard switch out well I've stopped the video for a minute because while I was trying to get this hazard switch out suddenly the lights started working all the rear lights started working now, I'm sure most of you are thinking, well, your hazard switch is bad and it just kind of got jiggled around and started working again. But the problem is, is the center tail light is not wired through the hazard switch. If your hazard switch is out, your center tail light would still work. And you'll see this. And I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to go ahead and take this out and still show you everything, how, how everything works here. Putting the hat, taking the hazard switch out and putting it in. And we're going to take a look at the brake switch. I'm also going to show you a way to test your hazard switch and that'll show that even if your hazard switch is out, the rear light is still going to work. But let's just continue on even though this mysteriously fixed itself. Now getting this hazard switch out was no easy task, I can tell you that right now. Um, as you can see there's two little tabs on each side of the switch that had to be pushed in in order to break it loose to get it out of there. Let's look at in this next photo. It shows that how it's actually sitting in the car. So you have to there's a top one and a bottom one. You have to push them in in order to get it out. Now I worked on this for a while and I almost gave up. I mean I was getting really fed up and I finally figured out if I took my thumb and pushed up on the back from the back side and then put the screwdriver, small screwdriver on the top and pushed down. I kept working that and it finally popped loose and I mean it basically fell out of there. Then once that popped loose. But I almost gave up. I almost took out the radio and everything so I could at least see that bottom tab. But yeah, I worked it for a while and it finally came loose. And yours may or may not come out easily. Yeah, I guess you'll find out. But this one was pretty difficult. But once I got it out and then you got your hand on the wire, you can pull it down behind the dash and out. And you can see it here. You can see the tabs. And mine was in there solid. Some people say they just push theirs out with their thumb, but mine was in there really solid. It wasn't going anywhere. I'm disconnecting the wire now, getting the hazard switch off completely so we can do this little test here. Now without the hazard switch on, here's a one last look at the switch. Without this hazard switch on, you can hit the brakes and see how the center light comes on? I had no lights before. Now as the center light comes on, it will work without your hazard switch in there. But now we're going to check if your hazard switch is bad. You can put a jumper between that white and brown wire. I used a paper clip and stuck it in there. And then if you hit your brakes and your brake lights come on, that means your hazard switch was bad. If your brake lights didn't come on when the hazard switch was plugged in, but they come on when you do this jumper, then it means your hazard switch is bad because that jumper is bypassing the hazard switch. Now there I put the switch back in. I just took my hand, put it up behind the dash, kind of lined it up and pushed it right into place. Some people act like you have to use long needle nose pliers to get in there and grab it, but getting it in took a second. Getting it out was a pain. Now we're going to take a look at the brake switch. And you have one more panel down here. It's only held in there with two push pins. And underneath that is your brake switch. This brake switch is not held in by anything other than there's like little grooves on it and it pushes through the holes and the, just those grooves just kind of hold it in there. Normally if you have zero lights in the back including that center light the brake switch is usually the culprit. If you have a center light and no brake lights usually the hazard switch is the culprit. 
I'm not going to take this brake switch out because everything's working again, so I'm not going to mess with it. I just wanted to show you where it was at, and it's pretty easily accessible and pretty easy to get out of there. Well, this video didn't go exactly how I wanted it to. All I did was clean some grounds, move some stuff around, and suddenly they start working. I would much rather have changed a part and known this was a problem other than... I'm not sure what happened, but these C5 Corvettes are like that. Sometimes you just hit them on the dash and suddenly things start working. And you either cross your fingers and hope that's it, or you keep working on stuff. But I'm just going to let it go. Um, I'll just cross that bridge when I get there if it happens again. And I really thought I was going to have to change the brake light switch. And I'm still kind of wondering if that might be the issue. But it's working now, so we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully you like this video and you got some information that you needed. Because, I mean, there's a lot of information there to find out why your brake lights and your rear lights aren't working so hopefully you get some information there and if you liked it please subscribe please hit the notification button hit the like button and if you need parts for your c3 c4 c5 corvette go to my website at c3stingray.com and next time i'm putting up i also have an issue with this car when you put the key in and you go to start it and then this light comes on the steering wheel locks and it says pull the key and wait 10 seconds and then restart the car I'm getting that now, suddenly. I just started last week, too. So, I'm going to show you how to fix that next week. And that will be a little bit more in-depth video. So, hopefully you can tune in. Make sure you, like I said, subscribe. And hit that notification button. The like button. And I'm done talking. I'll see you on the road.